Hi, I'm Carrie Edwards, and I could not be more thrilled that Equal Means Equal asked if they could use my song as their theme song this summer for all of their uh, big events uh, supporting the ERA. So, uh, they asked if I could do a little video to share my story behind my song with you, uh, and I said, absolutely. The thing about this song is um, I wrote it after the Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I couldn't speak for four days. I just walked around the house in a haze and a fog, um, just a little devastated. I felt sucker punched, as I'm sure a lot of you did. Um, and the thing about it is, there was a time in my life that I would have celebrated this. I had a friend who was gracious enough to have a conversation with me a few years ago where she let me just ask questions and work through some things and we were discussing um, the abortion issue. And I had always been, in my mind, staunchly pro-life. And we were having a conversation and she was not judging me and I was grappling. And I, at one point I said to her, um, I don't just, you know, I can't be like, oh, yay, abortion. But I also don't want a young 15 year old girl to end up hurt or worse from a black market abortion because she was scared and didn't have any support. And at that point, she said, then you, my dear, are pro-choice. And I just, I had to grapple with that a little bit. And I went, I'm pro-choice. Sometimes I've come to the conclusion that pro-life is pro-choice. I believe that there are certain things that we could focus on that would ensure that girls and women feel supported so that there is a real choice. If they are in a position where they feel that the choice that they need to make is to have an abortion, that needs to be between them and their doctor and their God and nobody else. It is a hard personal choice. On the flip side, I have friends who were pressured into an abortion because it was available. There needs to be protections in place for them too, so that it is a choice that they make or don't make. There needs to be support for them if they don't want to do that. So at the end of the day, choice needs to be protected. Bodily autonomy needs to be protected. That is why I wrote this song. After I wrote the song, I learned of another song <laughs> that I had never heard before. And uh, when I started telling people about the song that I wrote, they said, oh, you're redoing the Helen Reddy song? And I went, the who? <laughs> what song now? Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit that I'd never heard it. Um, how amazing is it that she could write a song like that? And those song lyrics still impact young women today, whether we've heard it or not. We know to say, I am woman, hear me roar. I am woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore. And I know too much to go back and pretend. I am so grateful to have learned about such an amazing song whose lyrics have stood the test of time to the point that even young women who've not heard that song, we still have that saying now, I am woman, hear me roar. That's what I went with um, when I wrote my song, which is an angrier song. It's a battle cry. I went, everyone to hear it. I want you to take it to your marches. I want you to sing it in your cars loudly. I want you to get pumped up for this cause, you know, um, boots on the ground. So I'm going to do that for you now acoustically. I am woman. 
hear me roar Ah uh-huh. 